Melee, 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 how you doing, Bobby Durkins here, thank you so much for joining me for a special video, it was by request, today I'm going to be talking about the Texas A&M Aggies, I'm going to be talking about the 2020 season, I recap a little bit of last season to tell you who's still with the Aggies, who's gone, before I go any farther, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, just to let you know, old Bobby's putting up the video, so, a couple of weeks ago, I asked, I said, hey, who do you want me to talk about? And one of my good buddies there, I had to go back and look, said, I want Texas A&M next. So I said, we'll do it. So it's been a couple of weeks. I'm sorry I've been running from corona, not the beer, the virus. And so I finally got to it. This We're going into Jimbo Fisher's third year, okay? He finished up year number two. Year number one, very competitive. Very, very, very competitive. Kellen Mond was looking good. And then last year happened. Uh, you finished 8-5. and five. You, have, you, you had a very tough schedule. I, I'm, I'm, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You had one of the toughest schedules in the country, hands down. Had to go to LSU. Had to go to Clemson. You had to play Georgia. You had to play Alabama. You had to play Auburn. And those were your losses. Right? You, that was your losses. I'm, I'm going to look down your losses. You lost to Clemson, lost to Auburn, you lost to Alabama, you lost to Georgia, and you lost to LSU. All right? You won your bowl game, the Outdoors Texas Bowl or something like that. The really big thing that stuck out to me about last year was Kellen Mond. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I try to take it easy on people because I can't imagine what it would be like for... An entire team's hopes and dreams to be relying on me. I, I don't know what it feels like. At the same time, I was not a highly recruited player out of high school. At the same time, I'm not playing quarterback for an SEC school. I, I, that's not me. So there's a little give and take there. So I'm not going to go after him. But I said last year, I did, I did a whole preview on Kellen Mond. I felt like he would be one of the most explosive players in college football. Didn't happen that way. Uh, he was inconsistent. It was just, just is what it is. I don't know if he had some injuries that was going on, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if your career, just in case somebody's going to go, you didn't do your research, you didn't know he was injured. I'm going to tell you, if your entire career in college is riddled with injury, go ahead and kiss your career in the NFL goodbye. It ain't going to happen. So if that's the case, that's the case. He, let me tell you who they lost. They lost some big names. Uh, from uh, last year, and I'm just going to go through them real quick, but they're big names. Y'all forgive me on this one. Well, the eight, first one's easy. Wide receiver Kendrick Rogers. This guy's six foot four, big. Guy go out there and play. He's ridiculous. I know you got a really good recruiting class coming in. I'll talk about that in just a second, but it's hard to beat experience. So Kendrick Rogers, he's going. At Justin Matabuiki, or Matabuiki, whatever his name is. That guy's a freak. He was on the defensive line. I remember hearing Sweeney talk about him. I mean, it was just like, wow, this guy's crazy. And he's he just, he just crazy, crazy good player. Uh, but he's gone. That's a big deal. Next one, Ja'Shawn Corbin. Here's the deal about Ja'Shawn Corbin. Ja'Shawn Corbin was going to Florida State until Jimbo left. So he goes to Texas A&M. He transferred back to Florida State this year, and if I understand correct, he will be eligible immediately to play uh, this year. If uh, if everything, if I'm understanding everything correct, he should be able to play. Next, Courtney Davis. Courtney Davis is another one of these big wide receivers. Guy has experience out the wazoo. Very talented young man. You lose him. So you lose two big wide receivers, and then this went on a lot of teams. I mean, this will be a big deal. I don't care where you're at. Bama, Clemson, uh, LSU, Georgia, Ohio State, wherever you may be at. Braden Mann, he was their punter. I'm telling you, when you have a guy who can switch the field like that, you know, you're at your own 25-yard line, you punt the ball. Most of the time there's a return, and they have a short field to drive on. This guy right here could pin you. It's a big deal. Even though he's a punter, this guy was one of the best punters in the country, if not the best punter in the country. He's gone. 
All right, let's talk about recruiting. I'm just going to scoot through this real quick because I want to jump into what your roster possibly look like. Like tomorrow, if you if, if, if you got to play tomorrow, you had to go line up, this is most likely who would be out on the field for you in the starting lineup. Uh, according to 247 Sports, you had the sixth-ranked recruiting class. Yeah, I mean, there's some got very talented players on here. Jalen Jones was your number one player. Antonio Johnson, he's a safety. Uh, got some uh, O-line, Chris Morris. Uh, Moose Muhammad the third. Everybody remember Moose and Muhammad from Carolina Panthers? I think this is his boy. And if it's not, well, I'll go ahead and say it is his boy because there ain't no way it ain't. Uh, got him. I mean, you got a bunch of good football players here. I'm looking at them going down through here. Uh, so, good recruiting class coming in. All right. Here's who you have if you were playing right now. This is most likely who it would be, barring now. Of course, this is this is May first, so a lot can happen between then. So, somebody can get caught from. Properly touching a goat, you know? So you never know what might happen. <clears throat> I'm going to run down these. I know it's going to sound like I'm reading out a phone book, but this is most likely who would line up for you. Some of these you're like, duh. I know what's going to happen, but line up a quarterback for a killing mine. Uh, left tackle going down to right tackle. We're looking at uh, uh, Dan Moore. We're looking at Jared Hawker, uh, talented football player, Ryan McCollum. Kenyon Green, Carson Green, tight end Jalen Windemeyer, Isaiah Spiller, very talented running back, wide receivers Cameron Buckley, Jamon Osmond, remember him from last year, very talented young man, and uh, uh, Caleb Chapman. Going over to the defensive side of the field. Starting on your line, Tyree Johnson, Jaden Peavy, Bobby Brown the third, DeMarvin Leal. Uh, your linebackers, Anthony Hines the third, Buddy Johnson, Miles Jones, Leon O'Neal. That's the that's a free safety. Then we're gonna go to strong safety, Damani Richardson, uh, right cornerback, Elijah Blades, and Clifford Chapman. Now, I'm gonna jump right into your schedule. I'm not gonna do my official prediction. But there is a great chance that if y'all can protect Mon, and if I can remember right, y'all got three of the five coming back on the line, and one of them that's, you know, that's new, is not really new, he's played. I can't remember which one it is. So you have enough experience on the line to be able to give him time. He is athletic. Obviously, Kellen Mon's athletic enough to extend a play. He can run. But that, that, that's a duh factor. He can, he can run the ball. So he can extend a play. He can get out of trouble. He's not a stick standing back there getting ready to get demolished if he doesn't have an all-pro offensive line in front of him blocking. So he can stand back there because he runs a 7-2-40. He's not that guy. Get that idea out your head. He's in good shape. But that's going to be big. And I'll get to that in one second, and I'll close this sucker out. Very first game is Abilene Christian. Is that a martyr? It will be in this game because they're going to beat the crap out of it. But as I said, I'm not doing my whole picks and everything. You play North Texas. Then you got Colorado. Then you're playing in Arlington against Arkansas. You play Mississippi State. I know Mike Leach is there, but it's going to take old Mikey Poo some time. You got Fresno State, then you play Auburn. You, there's a great chance you're going to be 6 0 going into that Auburn game. There is a great chance you're going to be 6 0 going into that Auburn game. You're really going to have to lay a golden turd to not be 6 0 going into that Auburn game. I'm not saying that game against Mississippi State is going to be easy. I'm just telling you. All those teams I just named out before then, some of them I didn't even know existed. Auburn, definitely a big game for y'all. That game's going to be at Auburn. If you get out of that game, I believe you win the next three in a row. I mean, you got South, Ca South Carolina. I know 
know you're at Columbia. I know everybody's going to hype it up that it's the, the, the SEC. Have you really looked at South Carolina? And then you're Ole Miss. You're going to see Lane Kiffin. It's going to be fun. He's probably going to be tweeting something absolutely hilarious on the sideline. But you should, there's a great chance you're going to beat them. You play Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's cute. You know, oh, Vanderbilt every now and again, they'll, they, you know, they'll, win, they'll have a winning season. They act like they're about to, you know, really fire things up and everything. And, and they piss away multiple games. Vanderbilt's just adorable. Uh, and then it gets bad from here for y'all. You're in Tuscaloosa, you got to go play Alabama. And then you've got to play LSU. All right, last year, 50 to 7. Y'all didn't even show up. Horrible. 50 to 7? I mean, I know they were really good, but y'all should have at least put a couple of touchdowns on the board. That's a different LSU team, but they still got a lot of talent. This would be a good chance for you to run with them. But those last two games are big. So you've got these returning starters. You've lost some really, really big names. So what do I think about this coming season? First of all, you're paying a lot of money to old Jimbo to turn things around. Well, Bobby, this is his, this is his, this is his third year only. Well, I want you to think about this. This is his third year, and what, Kellen Mond's gone after this. Am I right? I could be wrong. Is he? Let me look. Let me look right here. Y'all just forgive me. I'm going to have to look right here. He's a junior. I believe he's a junior. He might come back. I don't know. But I, for some reason, I'm thinking this is his last year. Forgive me if I'm wrong. It's no big deal. Kellen Mond's got to play good this year. Kellen Mond cannot come out and be inconsistent. His first season with Fisher, he was inconsistent some games, and next game he looked like somebody that was going to just burn the woods up in the next season. Last year, the woods burned him up. He did not look good. I know that he had some injury here and there. I'm just telling you, he did not look good. And a lot rides on him. A lot rides on him. You got these good recruits, so some of them are going to come out on the field. And, hey, Clemson understands. We've had some first-year guys, I mean, fresh right out of high school, the ink ain't even dried on their diploma good. And, man, they're playing like they're an upperclassman at Clemson with all the talent we have. So you're probably going to have some players that's going to come out there and do some good things. But I'm going to tell you right now, Kellen Mond is, is a biggie because if he comes out there this year and he doo-doo's all over the place and y'all lose... Oh, Jimbo is going to start hearing about it. He's going to start hearing about it because all of a sudden, that luster of paying him $7.5 million plus per year is going to start wearing off. Nobody's going to care. Ask Michigan how much they enjoy paying Harbaugh versus the return they're getting. I might be a redneck, but I, inter I understand return on investment. Okay? I, I understand it. You know, if you go to the Sizzler and you pay $7.99, you better be getting a darn good buffet. But if you go in there and, and you pay $8, leave a little tip because the waitress is kind of cute, you know, teeth are straight, and you find a fingernail in between your teeth where it came out of the buffet, that's not, that's not what I want. For y'all, if y'all go in, first of all, when you lose one of those first six games, y'all are in trouble. Next, if you go in, you play Auburn, and they blow you out, you've got problems. Or one of these other teams, you just, like all your big games, it was, you get owned in them. There's no growing from what you did from last year. That's the big thing. So what's my point? Killing mine, it's all on him. And whether Fisher can get that team to play in and doing what they can do, or else you're staring down another with a bowl win, eight and five season, and I don't think that's worth nearly eight million dollars per year for that output. Well, I'm Bobby Durkins. Hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications.
I also put a little link down here to Amazon. If you shop Amazon, your wife shops Amazon, shop through that link. It kicks a little commission to my, uh, my channel. It doesn't change your price or anything. Just go through that link and it supports the channel and you're not even having to spend extra money. It's just what you're going to buy anyway. So I do appreciate it. I'm Bobby Durkins. You keep showing up. I'll keep showing out. Bobby Durkins.